Hello and welcome to a special midweek edition of Painting of the Week. We do not do this every week. And today I'm especially excited because we're going to be talk about something so cool. We're going to talk about surrealism. And surrealism was more than just an artistic movement. It was philosophical, it was literary, it was musical, it was political, it was theatrical. But as an artistic style, surrealism basically just captures visual imagery from the subconscious mind to create art without the intention of any sort of logical comprehensibility. And yes, I got that from Wikipedia. But surrealist works are known for being bizarre. They take the element of surprise, they uh, make unexpected juxtapositions, non sequiturs, and it develops straight out of the Dada movements um, of after World War One. And if you don't remember what Dada art looks like, go back and watch my video on appropriation artwork. Even if you don't want to, you should do it, okay? Anyway, so surrealism advocated the idea that ordinary and uh, kind of depictive expressions, these things are vital, they're important, and this came directly from the fascination among artists with the Freudian analysis of the subconscious. Freud was this new sort of superstar of the psychological world, right? He did a lot of things with free association, dream analysis. He said that the unconscious um, was kind of where our, our deepest desires were lurking, and these artists kind of uh, latched onto that idea. They embraced idiosyncrasies. Um, they believed that the realm of the subconscious was where the true reality was, and they tried to depict that on their canvases. And they combined different things, different elements within the same frame, things that normally wouldn't be found together, and produced kind of illogical and startling effects. And the pioneer of this movement was Andre Breton. And he actually uh, wrote several definitions of surrealism, and I'll read them just because I think they're important. He defined it as a sort of a pure psychic automatism by which one proposes to express, either verbally in writing or by any other manner, the real functioning of thought. Dictation of thought in the absence of all control exercised by reason, outside of all aesthetic and moral preoccupation. And then he wrote a second one, because apparently the first one wasn't good enough. He said, surrealism is based on the belief in the superior reality of certain forms of previously neglected associations, in the omnipotence of dream, in the disinterested play of thought. It tends to ruin, once and for all, other psychic mechanisms and to substitute itself for them in solving all the principal problems of life. So it was a new way of depicting reality by putting an emphasis on the subconscious. All right, so now we've looked at some of the variety and uh, the coolness associated with a lot of the different surrealist painters. I'm just going to focus on two works quickly here. I'm trying not to make these videos super long because everyone's saying, Spencer, your videos are so long. Oh, and that may, I understand, you know, you don't want to sit here for like 10 minutes listening to me drone on about these paintings, but these are so cool. Anyway, let's talk about this one first, just because it's kind of weird. Um, this is from the, the Belgian artist, René Magritte, and it's entitled or actually, I guess that's not the title, but uh, more of a, a caption, called Sushi n'a pas une pipe, which in French means this is not a pipe. And um, of course, you're thinking, well, yeah, it's a pipe. But I'll read you the famous quote uh, that Magritte uh, said as sort of a commentary to this work. He said, the famous pipe, how people reproached me for it. And yet, could you stuff my pipe? No, it's just a representation, is it not? So if I had written on my picture, this is a pipe, I'd have been lying. So the idea of, you know, that art actually can't capture an image as it really is, is basically the idea that's being represented in this work. And then here is probably the most famous surrealist work from the most famous surrealist artist, Salvador Dali. And I was going to do a longer analysis on this painting, but you can find so many. Um, this is probably one of the most widely and heavily analyzed paintings on the internet, so you can find tons of stuff on it. But one thing that I learned when I was researching this painting, which I found interesting, was that the, the soft watches, the melting watches that are kind of iconic of this painting, and of surrealism in general, uh, were kind of thought to be inspired by the theory of relativity. Einstein's theory of uh, special relativity, which was kind of newly uh, developed in its nascent stage, and people were excited about it. But um, Dolly replied that the melting clocks were not sort of a artistic commentary on the futility of time and, you know, cosmic reality, but um, rather, he said, a surrealist perception of a camembert cheese melting in the sun. Oh, Dolly. <laughs> so I hope I gave you some insight and appreciation for surrealism. It's a very exciting and uh, 
trippy sort of movement, I encourage you to go out there and learn all about all the different paintings that you've seen in this rather brief video. Anyway, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.